it's time to create the algorithm for our game. Before we do that, I'll just do a little bit more refactoring. I want to capture the user input inside a method. So I'm using the refactoring tool in Visual Studio to create a new method. So here, all I have to do is to change the name of the method, but I'm also going to remove the static and the question mark from the method's signature. These are concepts that I want to present later in this course. And I'm also going to rearrange the order of the code so that it follows a nice and coherent order. So I have the get named right after the menu and I'll have the date on top before getting the name. And last but not least, I'm going to remove the date argument from the menu method since we just want to have one date each time the program runs. I want to use just what's absolutely necessary to keep the code as clean as possible. So this is the overview of my app and I'm ready to move forward and start creating the logic for the game. So let's start with the addition game. The first step is to create a variable that holds an instance of the random class from the .NET class library. And that's a class that generates random numbers. And then I'm creating two integers that will hold the operators for my addition game, first number and second number. And I'm going to use var and explicitly declare the types interchangeably just for practice. These variables will hold the value returned by calling the random.next method. And this method takes two arguments, the smallest and the highest number that I want to set as a limit for the number that I want to generate. So both variables will have a number between one and nine generated randomly. And then I have to inform the user what these numbers are. So I have to present the operation that I want the user to solve. So I'm going to use console.writeLine string interpolation, passing those two numbers, but with the plus sign in between so that we indicate that this is an addition operation. Then I ask for the user input. So that's going to be the result variable using the console.readLine method. And after collecting the input, I need to check if it's correct, if it answers the equation correctly. But the console.readLine method returns a string. So the input comes into the program as a string. So I need to pass it into an integer before I compare it with the sum of the two numbers. So for that, I'm using the pass method of the integer type, passing the string result. And I'm comparing that with the sum of the first number and the second number. And if you remember from our if else statements previously, we are evaluating a Boolean expression inside the parentheses. So this expression inside the parentheses returns a Boolean. It will be true if both sides of the equation are equal and false if they are not. And if they are equal, we're going to return a success message. And if they aren't, we will return a fail message. So let's test the program. I'm typing my name. I choose the addition game, I see the equation, and if I input correctly, I get a success message. Now let's test the wrong answer, and it also works. But of course, this is not a very fun game if I can only play it one time. It would be much better if I could answer multiple questions. And to do that, we're going to use loops, a loop statement allows us to execute a statement or a group of statements multiple times based on some condition. So let's try to insert a loop into our game to see how it works. First, I'm going to change the declaration of my variables. Initially, I won't assign any value to them. Then let's declare our first loop. It's going to be a for loop. This is a loop that executes a block of statements repeatedly until the specified condition returns false. A for loop normally has three parts, but all these parts are optional. The first one is the initializer, and that's a variable that's going to be used inside the loop. So it can't be accessed outside of it. And normally this initializer is used to keep track of how many times the loop is running. And we have the condition for the loop to run. The condition in my loop is that the initializer is smaller than five, because I want the game to run five times. And the last one is the iterator. This is modified in the end of the loop and it does something with the initializer. In our case, we are incrementing the initializer by one. So each time this loop runs, the initializer will be incremented by one. And when it reaches five, the loop stops. Let's see this in action after we write the code inside this loop. So each time this loop runs, I'm going to set those variables that I declared in the beginning of the method 
first number and the second number to a new random value. Then I'll ask the question, get the user input, and calculate if the input is correct, and reply with a message. But since I'm playing multiple times, I want to keep a score. So in the end of the game, when the initializer equals 4, which means it's the last game, I'm printing a message saying game over, and your final score is the score variable that I'm going to create. So I'm going to declare this variable locally inside the method via score equals 0, and then when the answer is correct, I'm going to increment the value of the score. So let's test the game with the debugger on so we can see how the loop works. I choose the addition game and the execution stops in the breakpoint that I set and I can hover over the message variable to see what it contains. Then if I step in, I can see the random object being created. Then the execution stops in the first expression of the loop and if we hover over the i variable, we can see that its value is currently zero. Then hovering over the second expression, we can see that it returns true since our initializer is smaller than five. And then our variables get assigned a random value. Let's have a look at the first one. First number will be assigned the value of two and the second number will be eight. Then we have the console.write line printing the equation and we get the user input. Since the expression returns true, this block is executed, we return the success message and increment the score by one. Then we evaluate the if statement in the end of the loop. And since our initializer is different than four, it returns false and, and the code block gets ignored. Then the iterator will be executed and our iterator increments the initializer by one and the code will run another four times. So if we check the initializer, we will see that the value now is one and the condition is still true since the initializer is smaller than five. So it runs again and it repeats the process. So let's speed it up so we can get to the end of the loop. So now the initializer equals four. And remember that in the first time that the loop runs, the initializer is zero. And since that if statement returns true, we print the game over message. And now let's repeat that same process with the other games. The code is very similar, pretty much identical. The only thing we need to change is the operation. So here we are changing the sign when we print the equation and we are changing the operator when we check if the answer is correct. And that's all we need. And we're using the asterisk for multiplication. And then let's do the same with the subtraction game, changing the operator to the minus sign. And that's all we need. Let's just change the condition for the loop to run to the initializer being smaller than two so we can test it faster. So I'm running my multiplication game. And after the second game, the program ends, but I don't receive a game over message. And that's because I forgot to change the last condition to check if the initializer equals one, which means that the game ran twice. So now if I change that and play the game twice, I get the game over message. So everything works well. Let's just change the multiplication game condition back to five. And you probably noticed that we didn't talk about the division game. And that's because that same algorithm wouldn't work with the division. If we try to divide two numbers from one to nine, we won't get integers. We will get numbers with decimal values. This is what you get, for example, if you divide one by seven. And I wanna keep my game simple. So I need an algorithm that gives me numbers that when divided, result in integers. And we're gonna create this algorithm in the next chapter.